Okay, we're going to go through three quick questions about the properties of symmetric matrices. I'm going to quickly read off what the spectral theorem of symmetric matrices says. This is on page 339 of your uh, textbook in section 7.1, and it has all the information that we need to solve these. An n by n symmetric matrix A has the following properties. A has n real eigenvalues counting multiplicities. The dimension of the eigenspace for each value uh, each eigenvalue lambda equals the multiplicity of lambda as a root of the characteristic equation. The eigenspaces are mutually orthogonal in the sense that the eigenvectors corresponding to different eigenspaces are always orthogonal, and uh, thus A is always orthogonally diagonalizable. So let's see if we can apply these to number 24. One, every symmetric matrix is non-singular. Well, uh, all we have to the only, the only property that we need to fulfill to be a symmetric matrix is to have a matrix that's equal to its transpose. So what is the transpose of 0, 0, 0, 0? Uh, that's 0, 0, 0, 0. It's a singular matrix uh, that is symmetric, so this is false. What about 2? All the eigenvalues of each symmetric matrix are real numbers. Well, point A, point A of the spectral theorem says A has n real eigenvalues. So this is true. Three, there exists a symmetric matrix which is not diagonalizable. Well, what does the spectral theorem say about that? It says an n by n symmetric matrix A has the following properties. Skip, skip, skip down to D. A is orthogonally diagonalizable. So just being symmetric uh, implies diagonalizability. So this is uh, uh, false because all symmetric matrices are diagonalizable. And four, yep, symmetric matrices are always diagonalizable. Yeah, so two and four, not two and three, two and four is our answer for 24. Question 24, which of the following is or are true? One, an n by n matrix that is orthogonally diagonalized must be uh, symmetric. So while it's not completely clear from the spectral theorem that the inverse of uh, what the theorem implies is true. So the, the, theorem, the theorem is stating that any uh, symmetric matrix is orthogonally diagonalizable, but they don't directly state uh, that, that any matrix that is orthogonally diagonalized must be symmetric, but this is, this is in fact uh, true. I wish I had a little more to, to um, uh, explain why that works the way it works, but uh, sadly I don't. Sorry about that. Two, an n by n symmetric matrix has n distinct real eigenvalues. Well, this is a really close call here. Um, if we think back to what the spectral theorem says, uh, it says that uh, that that a symmetric matrix will always have n distinct real eigenvalues counting multiplicities. So and no, it says n real eigenvalues counting multiplicities. So that means we can have fewer than n distinct real eigenvalues. We can have uh, eigenvalues that repeat. So we could have an eigenvalue of 1, 1, and 2, but our matrix would still be uh, orthogonally diagonalizable and thus be symmetric, even though, uh, even though it has fewer than n distinct eigenvalues. It would only have two distinct uh, different eigenvalues. So 2 is false. What about three? There are symmetric matrices that are not orthogonally diagonalizable. Well, nope, because the spectral theorem uh, says for any symmetric matrix, it is orthogonally diagonalizable, so false. And then four, if B is orthogonalized to PDP transpose, where P transpose is equal to P inverse, and D is the diagonal matrix, then B is a symmetric matrix. And Yep, and this kind of, I guess, acts to explain a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes in one. So the spectral theorem isn't just guaranteeing that every symmetric matrix is orthogonally diagonalized. It means is orthogonally diagonalizable. It's really meaning that uh, any matrix B that can be put into this form right here, and we know that uh, this P matrix must be orthogonal because that's a proper, this is a property of orthogonal matrices right there. Uh, it, it guarantees that any matrix put into this form must be symmetric. So four, 
4 is true, and 1 and 4b is our answer. So this is a little bit of a weirder one. This is the only time they make us, uh, this is the only time they've tried to make us do real math with symmetric matrices. And uh, you'll also see the term skew symmetric being mentioned. So that, that's just K trans, uh, a matrix that satisfies K transpose equals uh, negative K. Let's just draw out a, a three by three example of what a skew symmetric matrix would look like. So while a symmetric matrix would be like uh, A, B, C, D, D, E, E, F, F, like that, uh, because this matrix has to be equal to, its transpose has to be equal to negative, uh, it's non-transpose, if we just stick three negative signs in there and then take this transpose, we will end up with these, uh, these negative signs uh, over there, which, which should, hmm, yeah, sorry, I, I gotta be careful here. Yeah, no, so the other thing is, if you take a look, this is not fully skew symmetric. Why? Because the ABC values on our main diagonal, there's no way, if we make this A negative, it's still gonna be negative A over here. So we obviously have to do something a little more drastic than that. And in fact, the only values for which our matrix will be skew symmetric is if A, B, and C are equal to zero. Uh, because uh, negative zero is the only only integer that's equal to zero, if that if that makes any sense. So here's the general form of our skew symmetric matrix. We know that uh, okay, so this is called K, and then we we have S, which I'll make capitals just to just to be a little annoying. We have A, B, C, and uh, B. D, E, oh, capitals, capitals, E, F, C. Okay, hope I, yeah, I did that right, good. Um, and so we're adding these together and we're getting these certain entries. Well, since we know that uh, the, the main diagonal of K is all zeros, then uh, negative six, zero, six has to be the entries of our symmetric matrix here, negative six, zero, negative six, but that doesn't really help us because we're trying to solve for our matrix K. Uh, looking at our answer choices though, we can get rid of both E and D because their main diagonal is not all zero. So since we are adding these together, let's try to, oh, sorry about that, gotta shut that off, there we go. Let's, let's try to solve for uh, just one of these entries because if you look here, the entry the entry 2, 1 of all of these matrices uh, K are all different. So if we can solve for that one position, we should, we should be good to go. So how are we going to do that though? Well, we see that, uh, that this, so, so this is our matrix K, by the way. Uh, I'll, I'll put the transpose over here actually. Um, okay, so if this is our matrix K, then this entry plus this entry must be equal to what? Well, it has to be equal to the, that uh, corresponding entry of A. So little d plus b is equal to six. Uh, additionally, above the main diagonal, negative d plus big B must be equal to negative two. Now, what's the only difference between here? We've subtracted two d's and as a result, we've subtracted eight from our uh, eight from our total. As a result, D has to be equal to four, and B has to be equal to two. But the only one we care about is the one that came from our skew symmetric matrix, which uh, that gives us four, and we get our answer here. And you can go through this process for all of the other entries, and you'll see that since we get a system of two equations uh, to to solve for each of these we are able to uh, find all the entries. Okay, that's it. I mean, it, it seems relatively likely given how recent these kind of symmetric matrix, matrix questions have been asked that we'll get something like this on the final, but as you've seen, it's kind of just remembering what the spectral theorem implies and uh, 
you know, applying it over and over again.